Well, hello, this is Michael. It's Friday, it's one o'clock Belgium time, I have to say, because we have some international guests. And welcome to the second uh, webinar. And today it's all about sales pitching. So as previous time, uh, we'll do about 35, 40 minutes. We'll dig deep into it. We go really fast to show you lots of examples. So it's always a balance between strategic and lots of tactical uh, things. If you have questions, please ask them at the end or ask them in the chat. I will spend some time looking at it at the end and we'll answer your questions. So let's switch to the presentation of today, sales pitch. Now the problem what I've seen is that when every single time, actually this is really every single time, every single customer I have, when I talk to them, they, I always ask, show me your sales pitch. What do you show? when you're in front of a customer or in front of a prospect? What do, what do you say or what do you show? I mean, it's very similar and somebody should ask me the question later, do you need a sales presentation or what, what do you need to do? So that's a question for later. So what I see is when they show me stuff, it's always something that looks like an investor pitch. I'm trying to get money, typically startup scale-ups or something that looks like a stage pitch. And then they have this very cool picture of Elon Musk or a quote or Steve Jobs or something like that. And then I go, because if I see that, why would I listen to you? If you're the expert and you're on that stage, you show me a picture of Elon Musk with a quote, let me listen to Elon Musk and not to you. So please, as of today, stop putting quotes and stuff of other people in your sales deck. Put your own shit in it because you get the customer's attention, show your own stuff. Something else we see a lot is uh, what I call webinar pitches. Most of the time, very traditional, very boring. They, 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 I mean, it always goes like this. Uh, hi, this is the webinar. And then you have 10 minutes about company one and 10 minutes about company two. And then you start digging into all the details and it's sales, 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 sales. And I mean, literally, I, I get sick with that. So uh, I will explain to you today the sales flow, but also we'll quickly touch upon webinars. And of course, there are many, many others. Now today, something else. That's why I'm saying, what? Right? We're not going to do that. A sales pitch is something else. A sales pitch is something that is there to convert, meaning it needs to take your prospect to the next step. Now, here comes a trick where everybody's wrong. If your boss tells you, go do the sales presentation and how is the deal going? Well, in a traditional B2B process, you'll probably need four or five, even up to eight meetings before you can land the deal. So what's the next action? The next action is not to get the deal, the next action is to get to the next presentation, right? That's the way you win. You gotta keep the next action in mind and which is not closing in most cases. If you go B2C, very different story. If you go into very smaller deals, very different story, you gotta nail it straight away. But most B2B environments will take more time. So let's dig into sales presentations. There are five steps. First, we gotta grab the attention. If you don't grab the attention, if you don't understand how attention works, it's not. It's, it's, they won't pay attention, literally. Two, we got to talk about them, not about you. You could have guessed that. If we talk about them, the best way to do it, to move things, is to talk about the problem. And if we can do it, we should deepen the problem. I told that in the first webinar, I explained in a lot of detail how we could do that. But technically speaking, we got to talk about them, the problem, deepen the problem. Three, it's not because you understand the problem and they see you as an expert that they trust you. Trust is where sales happens. So we got to build in trust and we're not going to only build in trust in one slide. That typically that's then the one slide with all the logos. Now, can you imagine you do a slide with all the logos and you say, and, 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 and these are all my logos. Ta -da! It's not a story, right? It's bragging, it's being arrogant, and it doesn't work. By the way, 95% of large companies will have more references than you. So we got to find a different way of injecting something I call social proof into many slides and not talk about it. That is the key. So many things you do in the sales tech, you don't talk about it, you show it. And the mix between having a very good sales storyline, actually showing them, stuff but not always talking about it makes creates this conflict in somebody's mind that they think oh hang on what's going on this is new i, I gotta understand is i want to learn more exactly next step learn more right now we also have something called structure 
Meaning that once I have to trust, and it's one of the things I had to learn the hard way, is that a lot of, and you might recognize this, a lot of customers or prospects will tell you, well, that's very interesting. Uh, send me a quote to do something, but then nothing happens. And then nothing happens is because although you might get the trust, you didn't explain properly how to solve it, how they could trust you by showing it to others. So we got to play that card. And last one, if we want to win, we got to drive the next section. Right? So let's dive in. Let's start with what should you not do? The first thing you should never do is show an agenda. Right? I've basically just shown you an example, an agenda, but it's, it's not a sales pitch. I'm honestly genuinely doing a webinar explaining how this works without wanting anything back. So for me, in this case, it would make sense to say, I'm going to do this, that, 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 so you know what to follow, what not to follow, when to switch off, right? But please don't show an agenda. Don't forget, when you talk to somebody, the first three to four minutes are the most critical one. You will get 100% attention. So don't waste it on a bloody agenda. If you show an agenda, you will read the agenda because PowerPoint or slides are so strong. It's like the force. You cannot resist to start reading your bloody slides. Don't do that. Two, honestly, nobody gives a f I have to be careful here, about you or your team. Literally nobody. Unless you have Mark Kuka or Elon Musk in your team or a mega, mega, mega investor, then it makes sense. And in all other cases, you do not start with team or people. You do that in later when you've explained the problem, when you've given value, you've got to explain how to solve it. These are the people that can solve it for you. Then you create expertise. But if you start with it, you're just bragging. So no team. Don't get stuck on one point. It's a typical problem. You start talking, they raise a hand, say, hey, uh, Michael, um, can you please dig into detail there? And then, and then you get stuck on that. Don't do that. Then I do this, I say. Thank you for the question. I see it's gonna be a very interesting session. Let's do the following. You see what I've done? I've taken it back and I control the flow. All right, next one, don't get stuck on feature details. It's the same, don't start explaining all the technical details and all the stuff. I know you love your baby. I know you're so proud of your baby, your software, your service, whatever it is, but don't, you can show your love, but you don't need to explain everything to those people, right? And then last but not least, I call it the X factor is, a lot of people don't realize that, but they start bragging by telling how good they are. Yeah, I, have, I, I used to work for a company and they had a guy that had actually done two PhDs in parallel. I didn't know, even know it's possible. So every, every single time he would start explaining about his two PhDs. And basically what he was saying is, you, all of you, you're idiots, you're less smart than me. Don't do that. Do it later, do it in a more subtle way. I know you're proud and that's something very special, but do it in a more subtle way. First proof you understand what, they, what their problem is, what they're doing, and then you can flex your expertise muscles. I'm gonna quickly switch uh, uh, the notification because it is annoying. So here we go back. So keep asking those questions. I just don't wanna hear it now. Now, attention. Attention is, for me, it's, it's basically, if you have to remember two things in all this presentation, it's, it's the next slide. First, you need to understand how attention works. And by the way, this is for a sales presentation, for if you want to do stand-up comedy, you're watching a movie, whatever you do in life, a LinkedIn post, for instance, whatever you do, the first part, the first two, three minutes, you will get 100% attention because it is something new. When we see something new, we get intrigued and we think, okay, Prove it to me, right? Huh? The attitude, prove it to me. Coming from a guy with a sweater with his own name on. Now, anyway, two, three minutes of pure attention. So you gotta make sure that you do the right things. You gotta talk about them, not you. And you gotta talk about them, as I said. You gotta make sure that you talk about them while talking about the problem. Because if you speak about the problem they have or they might have or the, the problem they don't know they have, you actually trigger their brain. I'm gonna show you some examples how you can do that. You actually trigger their brain and you will deserve their attention. Now, whatever you do, attention will go down. It's just what it is. So, and, and I don't know if you've ever seen, if you look at stand-up comedians, who for me are like, it's the highest form of presenting because it's really difficult. So what they do is they'll tell a story, they'll laugh, and suddenly out of nowhere, they'll switch. 
yeah, talking about my grandmother, up and they're off to something else. What they do is basically they build in little peaks of attention because you can't keep the attention high. So it's always little peaks of attention. Attention will drop eventually. And then, you know, at the end, it's going to go up again. So here is a technique that not a lot of people use is I will always say, I'm getting to the end of my presentation or I only have two more slides to go. And the reason why I'm on purpose saying it is because it triggers again that attention and people wake up and they go like, okay, so Michael is gonna ask me a question. I gotta do something. I'm already busy with my next meeting. I don't know what they're doing, but anyway, you gotta trigger the attention. And then of course you gotta end, end strong. And what is ending strong? It's ending with the next actions. Where does this thing gonna go? And you will give them choice. And I'll show you later how to do that so that people actually really do something or potentially do nothing, but at least you know, which is fine because we're sales and qualification is part of the game. Also, the other thing, one of the things I've, I've seen is, um, and I don't know why people do this, is a lot of sales, when they do their presentation, their story, it's like they're happy it's done. Yeah, I, I hope uh, I hope it wasn't boring. Or uh, yeah, I'm so glad uh, you spent the time with me. What? The f you have a great product or service. Be proud. Say words. What's what's ending strong? Saying I am confident that my solution will bring you. Uh, uh, uh. I'm absolutely sure that even if you use one of these slides or one of the tips I've just given you, you will see. Be proud. Say you're proud. Say you are confident, even if you're not. It's a good trick, right? It's one of these tricks they teach you in uh, NLP courses. But say that stuff. Now, here is a here is a technique. Uh, a technique I use is when I go on to very large stages and and I get stressed. And it's normal you get stressed, and and you learn that it's not really stress. It's more adrenaline to to you know you can do it, but you you just get excited and you you got to control that flow, right? So. One of the tricks that I do is that I learned that everybody always knows the whole middle part because it's their expertise is what they do every day. So what you got to train and what you got to script is the first three sentences and the last three sentences or two or three. So I'm always training myself on my first sentences and my last sentence. That's the only thing because all the rest, once you get going, it's like you're rolling down the hill and you kind of, you can't stop anymore right so train that get that into script get it good it's like cold email we'll talk talk about in one of the next uh, webinars focus on the first and the last part now i told you that you can have create peaks you don't realize it but you can create peaks in the visuals you make you might have noticed that i will have a white slide a black slide a funky picture whatever now the funky pictures and a bit of the a bit of the the controversial stuff is my style if that's not your style don't do it but here's an example of how, what you could do is a black slide and then you reverse it in this case i put my own face in there uh, you don't need to do that but play around with colors play around with visuals. When I look at sales presentation, I'll do two things. I'll look into the sales flow, the story flow. Does it make sense? Do I understand it? Will I buy into it? And two, let's look at the design and the visuals. How can I make sure I keep the tension and the attention very snappy um, and how to do it? And you'll see many, many examples of that. Another thing is when you look at slides, and, and basically this, this, this actually accounts for websites and a lot of other things, but when I look at a slide, I always look into where does my eye land? I want you to know upfront, to process upfront what the conclusion should be that your prospect needs to have. Now that's a very long sentence, but what I'm trying to say is you need to control where they watch. Look at this picture. Your eye will go to the red thing. You cannot escape. But the weird thing is while you're looking at the red thing because of the arrow, which we people are like uh, cats chasing the mouse. When we see arrows, we follow. So that's why the reason you'll see a lot of movement and arrows and connection in my slides, because I truly believe that you cannot resist that. So look at the red, go to you, bam. All right? Think about that, look at your slides. So let's start with some interest slides. Now, if you have your first slide, wouldn't it be really cool that you basically show something while you're doing the introduction. Hi, I'm Michael, I work, blah, blah, blah. In the meantime, you can hit them with references, social proof, proving that you're the expert without you telling it. To the left, you see Odyssey field services, maximizing your field service potential. We could debate the orange color, I get it. But look at that. So the guy, in this case, the CEO, 
talks about field services software, but he's not mentioning the logos, but they're there, right? Customers see that. I do something similar. I say, um, I start always a bit, a bit different. I start with a question. When people meet me, they always ask me the same question because I know that's the question they have to me and I kind of reverse it. And here what I do is I put after plus 230 companies and counting. So what I want you to do is I want you to add something called social proof. Social proof can be three things. It can be logos like Odyssey example. It can be numbers like this one. It could be transactions. It could be speed. It, it's just a number or the third one. It could be a face. We like faces, we trust faces. I'll give you another example here. This is uh, one example of Frumel. Eh? They added the logos and then at a certain stage, they made a new version of this, which was much more, let's call it attractive. Look, very different, but still the same. Logos are still in there, a bit more higher cost and a picture that intrigues. And then the lady looks at the text. Am I saying this works perfectly? No, but it's already 90% <laughs> better than most of, of the slides that I see, right? So opening slide, include social proof. Ideally, I would also include your name because a lot of people just, you say, I, I have a difficult name. I say humble, humble, whatever you want to call it. If I don't make a joke, people forget it. But so I would put in my name because people like to write down your name. Now, how do we talk about problems, right? And, and we know we've learned in the past lesson, in the previous one, in the previous webinar, that if I want to speed it up, I got to put, increase the pressure. I got to figure out why should they buy it now, right? So what are we going to do is we're going to do something else. When I know who's sitting in front of me, it's my dream prospect. Yeah, I'm going to think about their problems, it's probably three, three or four. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create bait for that problem. And the bait can be many things. Bait can be uh, it can be booklets, it can be canvases, it can be many movies, it can be many things. But basically, I need to create that bait into my storyline, right? So then I can offer my solution. Now, let me give you an example of this. Here's an example of a company called Sweepright, software, selling software to, uh, to real estate brokers, boys and girls selling houses. They're all doing a good job, but many of them are pretty arrogant. They drive big cars and they're very proud because they're really good deal makers, right? So imagine I go there and I'm trying to sell a software. If I'm trying to sell a software to these guys and I have to start talking about workflows and technology and all of that, these guys say, why the hell would I need you? I have a Porsche there on my driveway. Why would I even listen to you? So what we did there at a certain stage, we, we would pick up the phone and we'd phone them up and say, hey, my name is Michael from Sweebright, giving you an example. and um, in your neighborhood, there is a real estate agency that has grown 600%. Now, if I'm a sales and I hear 600%, all my, all my alarms will go off. I'll go nuts, right? I'll go, what? Listen. And then you do the trigger. You don't say, hey, I, I, I say, you know what? Why don't I come by your office uh, when you used to be able to travel? We do an online call and explain it to you. And this is the slide we use. So we said the word traditional agencies face one common problem. I'm not saying they're traditional, but it hurts, right, when you get that. They all face one problem, right? It's basically you waste a lot of time on very small laborious tasks that are repetitive. So how does it work? Well, if you want to put a house, you go and sell a house, you take pictures and you have to put it on a website. You basically take about four to five hours per listing. Why? Bum, 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 bum. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically talking to them, showing that I understand their business and I can ask them questions. Do you do this? Do you do that? What software do you use? So basically I put myself on an equal level and then I got to do something that they're never told about. I got to do, and this is a technique called provocative selling, which was sitting in our previous webinar, which what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a higher level. So you might have never thought about this, but why don't we look at time, how you do that? So basically you spent 60% of your time doing all these boring tasks you just agreed on, and you spend 40% time on client facing. Meaning, where do you win, dear? Good sales, right? Yeah, I need to sit more with my customers. Nah, 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 nah. See, I'm, I'm going into the pain. And I'm going to say, you remember those, uh, that company that grew 600%? Well, let me show you what they do, basically. So this is you. You spend 40% of your time into doing Client facing, well, those guys that, that grew 600%, what they do is the following. That's how they win, because they spend way more time with client facing. We, Sweebright, will bring you from the 40% to the 70%.
This for me is one of the most perfect pitches I've seen in years. And you can, you can use these many, many, many type of businesses. Basically showing them something, a situation they know, you give it a higher level and you show them how easy it is to get from one to there with a successful company. This works really well, scaled our company dramatically, by the way. Um, and it's one of the better examples I, I, I could find. Now, the other thing that also works really well is combining your expertise, your thought leadership into one picture. And one of the pictures that I am always looking for in any business is something I call the, the cause effect. And here is a very good example of drift. Old way, traditional marketing, it hurts. And then you make it complex, form email, blah, 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 blah. And you say time, days, two weeks. What they invented is they have a chatbot, right? And they, they, they name their chatbot, not a chatbot, they name their chatbot conversational marketing. Now, that is pure, hardcore thought leadership. So if you can find the word or words to, to describe what you do in a better way, always do it, always do it. And what you see here in the, in the visual, and I think it's, it's really genius, is they go from the one, two, three, four, five steps, they go to two steps. Conversational marketing, only two steps, time in minutes. The one thing I wouldn't do is the smiley face. I think it's stupid. In a, in a hardcore B2B environment, don't do that. In a B2C environment, phew, man, <laughs> have fun. Another example here is again some Sweet Bright because, um, because I, I, like, <laughs> I like how they've done it. Here they show a lot of, uh, they show a lot of um, logos that these uh, mortgage brokers, uh, mortgage brokers, the real estate brokers don't know. And what they show is you see industry is red, which is the guys you're, or girls you're talking to. And then you say in Belgium, there is another company growing faster than you, but there is even more potential, right? It works really well. So this I really like because it's a very intelligent mix between a before, which is complex, and an after, cause effect in one slide and actually building thought leadership. And if there is one thing that people will remember, it is exactly the new approach you have. Don't forget, a lot of people want to optimize business. Nobody cares about an optimization. We all believe something new will solve it. So give them something new. Take something old, put a new jacket around it, right? The facade, the front is absolute key. I see way too many companies, it sounds like a rant, but I see way too many companies that have built beautiful technology or unbelievable processes. And they're thinking, yeah, but um, yeah, but all my competition and yeah, but it's all bad and it's, it's, it's empty. We have built and look at the reference. Yeah, well, honestly, if nobody knows it, who cares, right? So build the front in your slides, on your website, in all the material you do. Now, last webinar, I explained to you that there are two levels in B2B. You have a strategic level and an operational level. And I quickly want to retake that because it's very important from a pitch point of view. So if you go to executives, they only have two pitches, which is everything has to do with revenue and everything that has to do with cost reduction. Now, if I have to choose, if I have money, I will always take the promise of new. So most companies that come to me and say, Michael, fix our pitch, they always talk about cost reduction. So the question is, how can you turn a cost reduction into something positive? And I'm gonna show you that immediately. Don't forget operations, operations, so strategic, not too many details to talk about tomorrow, the vision. If you go into operational business, you gotta talk about today, solving shizzle today. Smart thing is, once you've built your deck, you get back home, you don't send all your slides, you send a few, we'll talk about that later. And basically you send the material that either the execs or the operations need to get approval. So you switch it around. Still saying that, haven't seen that people dare to do that. People get home, they send their 60 slides, don't do that. Now, here's an example of settlement. So they had to explain if you build a house, it's a, the building of a, of a company actually of a, of a large building, let's say it like that, is about 20%. But actually, if you look in 20 years, the biggest cost is the maintenance cost. So if you come in and you say they have a blockchain, pl our bl blockchain platform can take care of that, that you can reduce your cost, it's not truly attractive, right? So what we did was something else. Also note the logos in there. So what we did was we said, this is the current situation and this is the situation after settlement. You see what we do? We reduced the, so we made the cost look we reduced it, plus we added a layer of revenue, right? So this is actually turning a cost reduction into something positive, right? And again, note the social proof, note the logos in there. Another one, which, which, which is the one I really, really like is 
isn't there a way of combining everything into one visual? Yes, there is. And I learned it actually while I was sitting in a meeting a few years ago with a guy from McKinsey. And he just take, uh, he took uh, um, something to write and he started making this drawing. And my I was like, God damn. So here's a technique. And I show it on a company called Noingo. They sell a learning platform. So what they do is they go into the meeting and then they say, listen, and if what I'm doing now is called traditional learning. So if I do traditional learning, then there is a big problem with it. It's unreliable, right? The knowledgeable is unreliable. So how do we fix it? Well, we buy software, right? We do e-learning. The problem with e-learning is that it's unpredictable, right? Now you have to imagine that the people sitting in front of you are either in the lowest level or in the second level, right? And then you say, so how do we fix unpredictable knowledge? Well, we add intelligence. We add intelligence into the software. And what would you get? You get predictable knowledge. Are we there yet? No, because it's still unreliable, right? So what do we do? We actually apply deep, uh, deep analytics. And by doing that, we can validate the knowledge so it becomes reliable and predictable. Are we there yet? No, we're still building on the future. And the future actually is something called expertise mapping, which will give you expert knowledge. Right, so here, everybody can recognize something in it. I can talk about the problem. I did it in, in 30 seconds, but normally you do 10 minutes. You talk about, you show your expertise, you talk about their problem, you give them a structure, a path for the future, and then you say, well, this is how our license system works, right? So here you have it all combined. And so ignore the Dutch, the Jaste Leermethode for those uh, speaking English, it means the right way of, of learning. Now. So how do we then build trust? Well, trust is people. We buy from people. So here are some examples. I, I, I will repeat Drift because they do their genius job. They will always have a face on their website. Just look at the website now. It changes every week. Always faces. We trust faces. We trust people. Another example is a company called Online Werkroster. Ignore the Dutch. Um, what they did was they, on the moment we started talking in the beginning, they didn't have a lot of customers. So what they did was they took actually pictures of people they knew and they added the text. And on top of the text is actually a conclusion of the text, which are the features of the software. And funnily enough, people never read because the text and the, and the, the sentences don't always match. And you've seen that more and more into websites, but that's something I would love to use into a slide deck. I will put it actually below. And here's an example of how you could do that. The other thing you could do, and this is guerrilla, really guerrilla sales uh, when you just started. So this is not for all the rest. All the rest is easy to fix. But if you have nothing, what I've seen is that sometimes people put in faces and they ask a question. They're not even a customer. They just ask a question. Something you could do, I would be careful with. If you have the customers, put their face in there. You can get it from LinkedIn, right? And you ask a question and you answer it. How strong would that be if somebody asks you a question of a big company and you answer, right? So let me keep the rhythm here so you can ask some questions. You can combine it. So remember, so we have a problem and then, and then we're going to explain what we do. And here I like to explain this is sweep, right? What do they do? We empower leading agencies. You have a ton of logos there. You see the arrow and then you say one, two. You don't speak about the logos. You say, we do this, blah, 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 rather short. But everybody watching is watching those logos and know these guys know their shizzle, right? So this is a very different way of talking about your company than instead of saying, we exist since 20 years, we're all veterans, and this is a picture of our CEO with a tie on. Yeah, he looks cool, I know. And yeah, yeah he's a very, ah, oh, man, stop doing that, right? Stop it. Now, imaginary use cases. Um, if you worry about, hey, Michael, this is going from left to right, don't worry, I'm going to end by the perfect ultimate flow, right? So I'm just highlighting some of the elements. Use case, I get many questions around use cases. So at a certain stage, I had to go into a company and um, we had to show a use case and we didn't have it. We, we, we built something new, service mixed with a software, we built something new, we never done it. And they asked us a use case. So we kind of came up with something that looks like this. And if you look at it to the, to the left, you see context. And then you have a subtitle. So we calculated what the potential gain would be. Do you have a solution? And then you have the impact. And then you put a graph that is beautiful. Nobody really understands it, but we all want it, right? With this slide, I sold a massive deal. I can't say it because we put this on YouTube, but I can't say we sold a massive deal. And this was not a real use case. It eventually became a real use case. But this, if I can do that, 
it means imagine if you're a real use case. So let me show an example of Stampix. They, they, they saw that example and they made a real use case. The one common I would say here is that when you look at the line, I would put the green and move it more forward, but it's very, very solid, right? If you do this kind of stuff. Okay, another example, something I like is when you do wanna talk about your company, why don't you dare this? Why are we different? What sets us apart? It's not only technology, right? You got to give the feelings. Technology is the people, right? We get that. But why don't you add something where you say, for instance, we will help you, we will assist you, even if we're not there by playbooks, guides, all of that. When this slide was made, they had nothing like that, right? We built, they built it as they were going along. But Typically, Belgium, European, we're kind of shy for some of this. Typically, American, you would kind of push that through. But I kind of like these slides because you're basically killing competition. Because if nobody dares to do it, you should do it. And you see the conclusion is in the slide, your part to become a next-gen agency. Now, how do I add structure? Structure is very important because structure makes gives confidence. If, if a CEO or an executive says, okay, I want to work with you, I trust you, I get attention, you want to make sure that you give them a flow. If I get stuck, it's because I forget to give flows or I, I give them the confidence that there is a process behind, right? Coming from a guy that has a company name called Kaomatic from Chaos, so I do know what I'm talking about. Here is a very nice example. I think the visual could be a little bit better. They know, my dear friends from Stampix, but they said you can show it. So what they basically wanna do is, is they show this. How does it work? So when's the moment you've signed? There is a two weeks, uh, so the gray bar is everything the customer needs to do, and the yellow is everything they do. And what they're basically trying to prove is to say, we're gonna do so many things, you just need to do two things, intake meeting, end to end, right? So the way I would visually restructure this, I would even make the white bar or the grayish bar much smaller, and I would make the part that they do much bigger, and I probably would move it a bit like this because lines going up, we all want to be on the line going up, right? So, can't tell you which company this one. It's a very famous big company. This is their example. I like the crawl, walk, run. I think it's overly complex. This scares me a little bit, right? So I would simplify this a little bit more. And also, no business goes like this. Businesses, see? Subtlety, subtle details make you win. How do you get to action? Next steps. Here's an example of Sweebright. So they do discovery meeting, extended demo, and then there is onboarding. It's like when you sell a car, what would you do with the car? I would drive around. They kind of give you that feeling. So it's hard to not do it, right? Another example of Noingo, two examples. You can try it yourself or you can talk and with one of our experts. Show your last example. This is the best for me. This is settlement where they say next steps, customize demo, meaning let's start working on it or here is something inspirational, educational, so you can learn. Now the customer or prospect, they will decide where they are in the, in the, in the, in the process. So if they say, oh, I wanna see the webinar all of that, you know, you don't have a deal, don't push it, go back at them in three months. But if they say, no, 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 I wanna have the customized demo, qualified, you're onto something. Give them the freedom of choice. Instead of saying, I'm gonna make you a quote, why are you giving yourself work? I know you want to say to your boss, hey, I've sent them a quote, but you, it's bad, right? Do it like this, way cleaner, it's very effective. And you know what I do? It's even more scary. I open the slide, I leave it like that, and I say, hi, do you have any questions? And I keep going and I don't speak about the slide. But while this is on their face, right? And you do 20 minute questions, 20 minutes they're looking to this next action, well, it's genius because eventually they'll say something about it. And the fact that me not talking about it makes, creates this contrast, right? Here is another storyline that I didn't explain in the beginning, but something that works really well because I like this contrast effect. For instance, you say, hi, your problem, eh, what we, you don't say your problem, you say, when I look at the industry and all of our customers that are doing similar things than you, dear prospect, uh, what we see, they always face the same three problems. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, no more than two or three, right? One, two, three. And then I say, you know, here is how to solve it. And what I do then is I explain all my competition. You could do this, you could do that, you could do this, you could do that. And then you see them going like, yeah, yeah, we've done that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you say, it's not gonna work, my friends. And it's not gonna work, and you know why? Bam, that is adding contrast. They'll never forget you. You gotta be, I mean, you gotta know what you're talking about, right? But that is typically something I do a lot because I love this contrast. It, 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 it 
peaks attention and you're telling them something, they have never looked at it that way, right? So make sure you add that uh, in there. Value letter, another example. Uh, I just wanted to show you the example here where I basically, if you like here, you have material like the, the top three blockchain use case, which is a booklet. I would use stuff like this in presentations also to say, hey, we teach you, we help you. Um, why don't you try it yourself? I do this on a stage. I, I think in the next webinar, I'm gonna explain this in way more detail how this technique works. I do it on a stage, but I also do it in sales decks because don't forget, the experience itself from the sales presentation is an intriguing one. If I just am there and blah, 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 right? It's not gonna work. So if I do different things and I keep feeding them with stuff and I say, no, no, I'm really, I wanna teach you. I wanna help your business. They will remember me, right? They will get to the next step. Now, we have another five minutes uh, before I go to the questions. See what I'm doing? I'm building up the end, right? Da, 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 da. I gotta talk about the ultimate flow, right? First a sip you get the ultimate flow. So we start with an opening slide, which is not on here. We start with an opening slide that contains, let's say a higher cause, a higher purpose, the, the, what you're trying to achieve, the end purpose, right? Your name, social proof, whatever it may be. Opening slide is then the problem. Problem is two or three elements. And if you can, try and visualize it, right? Here is a very simple example. And then you could actually deepen the problem. So you gotta, you gotta play with this. Here is the problem, that's the impact. That's where you can add the contrast and all the things I've just explained to you. What you could do is add one more, is this framing and vision of the model. You have these layers because you could do it that way, or you could actually replace one and two by that straight away. It's a bit up to you. I think I would do a mix. I think I would probably take the problem and then I would do the frame vision model if, if I'm able. And then my friends, only then will you say, we exist to solve that shizzle. We do this. Our sole reason of existence is helping you solve that. How powerful is that if you do it there, instead of saying, hi, my name is Michael, I uh, lead a sales strategy from, no. First value, problem, help, give them deeper insights, and then say, this is what I do, add social proof, right? After that slide, how does it work? It can be, for me, how many slides? Three, four, five, depends a bit what type of meeting. If it's your first meeting, you do three, four slides, the next meeting will be probably a technical deep dive, very different story, but you explain how it works. This can be processes of your service, this can be your software, this can be product you're selling, and then you say the structure. This is how we would implement based on all the experience we have. If you have no experience, then you say, <laughs> you say the same thing. <laughs> on all the if you have no experience based on all the research we've done, right? Um, you basically say, this is how we would implement it. This makes the CEO or executive, whoever has to decide, calm their mind. And then we say, if you do all of this and you work with us on this structure, this is the impact my shizzle will have on your business. This would be a perfect slide. Also note, again, social proof. So I'm hitting you all the time with logos, numbers, I'm hitting you and I'm not talking about it. It's just there, right? This is the only case where I will actually explain one of these logos. And then you end, my dear friends, and I hope I never see you do this live, meaning if you say questions or whatever slide or thank you, I'm gonna stand up in a meeting room and I'm gonna shout at you and I mean it, you say next actions. Now comes a question. You've done your presentation, you go home. What do you send? The whole deck? Right, that's what most people would do. At the previous company I was working, uh, we would send decks of 80 slides, it's insane, right? So what do you send? You send three to four slides. What are those slides? One, the problem. Two, why you? Three, the structure. And four, the next action. That's it. On purpose, I'm not sending them the most interesting slide because one, I wanna check if they actually open it. Two, I need an excuse for them to come back to me or I need an excuse to follow up. Your only goal with sales decks is to get to the next action, whatever that is. And in most case, cases, it's another call, it's another meeting, right? 
So you got to stage it from the beginning and stop being afraid of only sending two, three slides, right? It's you think, no, no, I got to No, you got to do nothing. You got to do you, right? Do what makes sense. This makes sense. I've done it for 230 companies. This makes absolute sense. You just got to stick to it, right? So if I look into it again, attention, peak with it, problem, why now? Build the trust across the whole deck with social proof, add structure to ease the mind, next steps to end, right? This, by the way, explaining this whole attention is the most watched video I've made ever on YouTube. That's how I came up to saying, okay, I need to build this deck and I need to really explain this a little bit deeper. So what's next? You knew I would do the next step, right? You knew I would do it. So what's next step is next Friday. I do the next one and there we're gonna talk about something completely else actually, which is pure thought leadership. Now, hang on, something I haven't told you is but the sales presentation, the sales pitch, the sales storyline I've just given you is actually even more important than anything else because the sales storyline is your landing page, is your website, is your cold email, is your thought leadership. So if you don't get that, right? If you build thought leadership with your expertise, you gotta make sure it makes sense and it blends into your sales storyline, right? So it's on the same link, by the way, or you can scan the 2D barcode uh, just to be very up to date. Um, next Friday, same model, same trick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it up now. All thanks for watching. You know that I've written a book. I think you all know, but it's always there. So I'm gonna open the questions now for another 10 minutes. So if you have questions now, please start typing them in the questions or in the chat. I'm just gonna look at them and I'm just gonna go through. Yes, you will get this presentation. Probably in half an hour, the mail will be sent with the presentation and you'll find it later on YouTube and all of that.